All right, now in this video, I am going to concentrate on the Beal tap. Okay, that's a spindle tap for your spindle threads on your lathe. It comes in a one inch, but in this case, I have the inch and a quarter to match my spindle on this particular lathe. Now, this is the Beal Tool Company. I'll leave a link in the description for this. It requires an inch and one eighth drill bit. Ordinarily, when I reverse a bowl like this, okay, and I want to take off the foot or, you know, do a little turning on the bottom, I use a drive block that fits in something like that, okay, and I chuck my drive blocks up either on a, a scroll chuck or sometimes a screw. Uh, here's one, here's a bigger one. But I actually have a, a screw on the back of that, and that fits into my Vicmark chuck. That was for a larger project. And I've got some uh, protective layers there to not mar up my, my piece. Here are a couple more. I have these all over the shop. This one is for a screw chuck. It's a little bit smaller, and sometimes I can hunt around and find one. Here's the challenge, and here's partly why I'm doing this. Here's one with a screw, a screw center for attaching it. This one is for an expansion recess on a particular scroll chuck. Here's another one. They're all a little bit different. So I'm not going to talk a lot about making a waste block out of one of these, but it's more the drive block that I ordinarily use. I don't have a vacuum chuck. This is my process. Now I have a nice piece of poplar that I ran through my planer on both sides to make it nice and flat and parallel. I'm going to cut this up into maybe three blocks that are going to become drive blocks and I'll show you how to tap this the way I would do it, okay? Well in preparation for this video I watched other videos showing how to tap a drive block or a waste block. And I discovered that there probably isn't a particular best way to do this, but maybe several ways to do this. And one more I'm going to add right now at the beginning of this video is using a scroll chuck. Let me show you what I mean. All right, now during this video, I'm going to show you how I made this particular drive block. It's tapped with the Beal tap. All right, and I'll show you how I do that. Now, I discovered that there are good ways to do this, maybe better ways to do this, but there are also options. I could simply take my, my waste block or drive block and put it in some scroll chuck jaws, tighten that down, and I can drill my hole and I can tap it. Now, there's a problem when I do this. I go through this with my drill, I'm going to run into steel right here. All right, so simple solution for that is to take a thin piece of plywood or masonite or something like that and just put that um, between your block of wood and your chuck. And we'll call this a backer board. And I saw this in a video, so I'm not inventing anything here. So anyway, you go through that with your drill. And when you start hitting that backer block, you can stop. And also with your tap. And that is a really good option for doing this. All right, let's move on. Well, while recording this video, I ran into a technical issue with my microphone. And from here on, the rest of this video is only recorded in mono. I really apologize for this. I will get this fixed for the next video. Thank you. All right, now with a little bit of research, I soon discovered that there was really one best and one correct method for, first of all, drilling the hole in your waste block. In this case, I'm using this as a drive block. So you drill a hole and then you tap it, okay? And that's best done um, without taking this piece of wood off and putting it back on, do it all in one kind of operation. Let me show you my setup here. 
All right, now there are different ways you can do this, certainly. Uh, I think the videos that I watched mostly started out with a faceplate. And you can screw this faceplate onto your block of wood. Or in my case, what I've done is I've just used some double stick tape. I'm not going to do any heavy turning on this. Mostly what I'm going to do, drill this out, number one, and then I'm going to tap it with this Beal tap. And I want to show you a close-up of the Beal tap. All right, now I've done a little bit of tapping with a device similar to this, a tap. Usually they're much smaller, and I've used these in my thread chasing operations. But if you look at the profile of this, there's a little bit of a taper. And you don't really reach the full extent of the, um, the tap or the threads until you get into this area right here. And that means that you have to go down Oh, fairly deep to reach that point. And I'm not sure exactly if I can go all the way down. This is a fairly thick piece of wood. I think one thing I'm going to do is take my block of wood off once again and just measure the, the threads and how deep the threads go on my spindle. And that'll kind of help us. So what I need to do, very important, is to have the block of wood register or contact this flat area right here. Or maybe we could call that a shoulder. So I'm going to take my, my vernier calipers. And I need to go all the way back to that shoulder right to there, and I'm gonna lock that in. An inch and a quarter. Okay, all the way from the shoulder back to here, I need an inch and a quarter. Uh, looking at my, my block of wood, and again, this is alder. Um, I have plenty of room right there. And something else I can do, if, if I start bottoming out on my, my face plate, I can simply take that off and continue tapping it, it'll be um, trued up well enough at that point where I can just continue tapping a little bit more. So let me find my drill bit and we'll do a little bit of drilling on this. All right. All right, now I do not want my Forstner bit contacting that metal faceplate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully mark this. And I can always take this off and drill it further. Take this uh, block of wood off the faceplate. I think I've got um, enough room right there. I'm going to allow another eighth of an inch, so I make sure I don't uh, ruin my drill bit. All right, now, the only thing holding this on is some double stick tape, double-sided double stick tape. All tape is double-sided. And as I always mention, I don't need a lot of speed for this, all right? Now, as I was researching, a number of really, really good videos on this subject. Alan Stratton as wood turns, and there were a bunch of them. All you have to do is do a search on the Beal tap, and you'll find them. A little bit more speed. PM, not very fast. And I'm going to start looking down at my tape. I'm 
Okay. And I think I'm in good shape. I have, have not gone through the end of that. All right. So I think it's time to put the tap in. And we'll do that. Now, um, I think the bottom line, the most important thing I can tell you is do this without changing this setup. Drill your hole and do the tapping and it's really going to be as perfect as you can get it. So there's my tap. All right, so what I'm going to put in my tail stock is a more of a cone center. Now I mentioned Alan Stratton and Alan mentioned a really, really good point that the, the threads per inch here on this beel tap are different than the threads per inch on the quill. All right, I've got you backed off just a little bit so you can see my, my tail stock and also the block of wood. What I have here is just a, a vice grip that I can use to rotate that tap. I've got it just, just barely into the opening because the beginning of the tap is a little smaller in diameter than it is back here. So now, very important thing, I'm not gonna run my lathe, all right? The only reason I got my tail center up here, my tail stock, is to line this up. And if I rotate that, it's lined up perfectly, all right? So I'm gonna lock the headstock right there because I need that block of wood not to move. So I start turning that and at the same time I'm, I'm advancing the quill And if, and if I turn this more than advance the quill, eventually I'm going to uh, get into that piece of wood and lose contact right here. So, and this is not that hard. It's just, just a matter of kind of feeling where you're going. I've done this a number of times with smaller taps if I'm developing a female recess that's uh, smaller than any of my thread chasing tools, it doesn't take much turning this that I, I kind of do lose contact with my, my cone center. So a uh, little, little practice, we'll get it. Here's what I would do different or the next time I do this in the future. Number one, I wouldn't use a really expensive faceplate. This is a nice stainless steel faceplate. Uh, actually, it came with uh, my robust lathe. So I wouldn't tie it up with a waste block like this. But if you attach a waste block, you have a little uh, indentation right here. So you could drill through that, not hit any metal, all right? And here your tap has a little bit of room to uh, advance. All right, now a couple more things as I continue. Number one, uh, Beal recommends using cross grain wood to do this tapping and I totally agree with that. And as I tap this, I went through a little bit farther and that will guarantee that my threads in the block of wood are fully developed all the way through. Now, let me take this off. We'll put our uh, dry block on there and I'll show you what I do with that. <clears throat> All right, now, this is gonna be used as a dry block. Let me thread this onto my spindle. Don't try this at home. All right, now, you can't see it, but I am 
well contacting that little shoulder back there. Now let's uh, turn this on. And I'm going to just true this up. And hopefully every time I put this back on my lathe, it will be fairly well trued up. Okay, now I have a little, uh, actually it's Russian olive, little Russian olive bowl I need to complete. So I'm going to put this into my live center right there. And we'll see how it does. So making a drive block and I'm, and I'm not going to end this video right here. I'm going to do just a little bit more. I'm going to thread some other drive blocks. Here's, here's a little bit bigger one, and that's actually some soft maple. And usually my dry blocks start out that big. This is 10 inches or 11 inches in diameter. Well, anyway, they end up a lot smaller. Okay, let's back up just a little bit. Now, what I try to do when I'm using a, a block of wood to drive a bowl blank. This has been rough turned and um, kind of trued up it looks like to me. I try to have this radius right here match the inside profile of my bowl. Okay, and just have that contact as much surface area on the inside of my bowl as possible. I'm going to do just a little bit more. Now the other thing I usually do, I put a little bit of shelf liner in here to protect my bowl and that also helps drive that bowl, helps to make contact a little bit in there, tighten this down, do a little bit of turning. Well, I think that worked out pretty well. I need to bring my dust collection hose up and do a little bit of sanding on this, but I can finish this Russian olive bowl in short order. So this is my normal procedure, using a dry block to finish a vessel or a bowl in this case. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a little bit more footage, call it bonus footage on, oh, at least one more dry block that I'm going to create. Sometimes I have a pretty big bowl and I need a really big dry block. When, when I'm using a dry block, let me show you one more thing here, is I try to contact that dry block with my bowl right in here. I don't want that just sitting on the bottom of my bowl because there's too much uh, opportunity for that bowl to kind of move around or vibrate. So I want that way out here in this area. And if I've got a larger bowl, uh, I'm going to need a larger dry block. So I've, I've reestablished this. I've put a waste block on my faceplate. Okay, and I've got that double stick taped to the big block of wood. Now this is the proper procedure and I kind of uh, went astray a little bit, but not a big deal. Uh, I don't think you have to tap that 100% on the lathe. You can take it off and do some of the tapping by hand and that works just fine. Anyway, let me, let me kind of get this back on the lathe and I'll show you this at least. But thank you for watching and uh, please subscribe to my channel. Um, part of what that does, come on. Now, 
please subscribe to my channel and part of what that does, it helps me come up more on uh, searches, a little bit higher on the list. So let's put this on here. Now something else I didn't mention, too many things to mention, is it's a good idea to lubricate your threads as you're using your tap. Okay, and I do the same thing when I'm chasing threads in wood with hand tools. Let me turn this on slowly. Okay, it's fairly out of balance. So, since I've only got that on there with double stick tape, I'm gonna bring my, my tail center up once again. Right there. Now true that up. This is the area that I'm going to tap right here and this side will go towards my headstock. Okay, as I tap that. Now let me make another really important point. Take my tail center away just a little bit and I'm going to turn my speed down and I want to I'm going to take my tool and level this off right here. Okay, now that area that I've got marked with my pencil somewhere in there is going to fit against that shoulder I showed you earlier. So it's very important that this be trued up and very, very flat. So having this nicely trued up, and you could even uh, sand that with a block of wood, that will guarantee that that's gonna fit against that shoulder and line up very nicely and be trued up. All right, now let me get my tap. And we do a little uh, tapping on this. I'm not going to show you a lot of what you've already seen before. So I got to drill a hole first. Let's do that. All right, I got my same setup here. And I have a waste block on the other side that I didn't have on there before. And that means I can go all the way through there with my Forstner bit and not worry about hitting any metal. So this is the updated correct version. That's okay, it's all about learning. And again, I'm, I'm probably turning it 500 RPM. All right, now I can tell, I can tell I've broken through the bottom of that block of wood. Let me retract this. Jacob's chuck. Shut that off and double check. Yeah, we're, we're definitely through now. So again, you can see this little area I've got highlighted with uh, pencil. So put the cone center back in, find my tap. Bring my tail center up, line that up. Let's spin that. Looks like it's very nicely trued up. Lock it down. And I will do my tapping. Now another important thing you can do is lubricate the threads. Makes it a lot easier. I just got some mineral oil and you can do that a couple times during this operation. I'm going to put my tap back in there. You see how nicely that goes in there. 
bring my tail center back up for alignment. Very good. There's my larger drive block. You get the idea, and if you've seen my other videos where I've turned a bowl or some other pieces, I use a drive block to complete the bottom. So all I gotta do is round this over and I'm all set. We'll talk to you next time, thanks.